Each person has a story as to um, how that day went for them, where they were. We all remember where we were, what we were doing. Uh, I remember my wife and I were, had both worked graveyard that night and had uh, just fallen asleep when we received a phone call from family members telling us to turn on the news. There we sat and watched uh, our own country uh, being attacked. That's, that's rough. Um, I'm a proud American. I love this country and to sit and watch that uh, in person. And, uh, it, uh, it, it's rough and it's still rough to me today. And I think everybody was pretty much in the same boat. Nobody knew what was going on for sure. In short order, we got showered and knew that it was just time to go to work and that um, you know our, our day, our week, our month, our lives were, were altered. Um, that we now had to embrace a, a, a threat to our society and to our America that we had never envisioned, uh, never thought would be here, but was here. We have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. If this was an accident, it would be a needle in a haystack kind of accident. I'm afraid we've got a tragedy mm. on our hands. I think we have a terrorist act of proportions that we cannot begin to imagine at this juncture. Clearly, the public was in panic. So the key, I think, was to build a, a rapport with the people that we were servicing and making sure that they felt safe. We didn't know what was going to happen. We had no idea where other things were going to occur. But we needed to, to deliver this um, secure blanket to the people in the community. We made a lot of arrangements that day. And you know, thank God none, nothing ever happened to where we had to actually implement it. But we, I think we were pretty, pretty much ready, or as ready as we could be. The teletype came out, I remember, from uh, New York City looking for, uh, for volunteers to, to go there and help. And uh, guys were, hey, you know, put my name down. And we sent in, I don't know, probably eight or ten names. We ended up sending people to 9-11, uh, uh, to New York City. And um, uh, most of what we did was support because that's what they needed. They needed somebody to, you know, work traffic posts. They needed somebody to help, you know, bring food to wherever it needed to go. They needed somebody to, you know, provide bunks and things of that, of that nature. And, and uh, it was therapeutic for us to help out. There was, you know, it was cathartic to, to go to the scene and do whatever you could do. This has changed the whole perspective of policing. Um, we used to look at um, terrorism and things as being a global thing worldwide, but now we're real, realizing now that we have to be on the edge for homegrown terrorism. Um, we're gonna continue to experience this. We're gonna continue to have attacks. We're gonna continue to have to have security at events that we never thought we'd have to have. It changed how we do business and what we have to do not only locally, nationally, but the intelligence gathering. It changed completely what we were looking for as we were just going around normal patrol. I think that what happened on September 11th has changed law enforcement forever. 